Here I've got my 18x33 food grade safe storage container. This is an absolute must when you're storing RODI water. Uh, recycled plastics and, and inferior plastics will often leach chemicals back into your ultra purified water. So all that time and hard work that you've done to purify the water will essentially be null and void if you store the water in an inappropriate container. Make sure your container is food grade safe. And if you're not sure, the best way to tell is to store some RODI water, make sure it's zero parts per million entering the container and check back in the container in about an hour, maybe two hours with a TDS meter. You should still be at zero parts per million. If you're at anything higher or if there's anything in the water, uh, you know, that's leached into there, uh, we definitely want to reconsider a different container. So in order to install a float valve, it's a pretty easy, straightforward process. You can see I already have prepped a half inch drill bit inside my uh, cordless drill. What I'm going to do is go ahead and take the lid off the container. Uh, another nice point about these AquaFX storage containers is they will keep the water almost airtight, which is important. Um, when you have ultra pure water sitting, it will slowly drop its pH. It'll grab CO2 out of the air and form carbonic acid. If lowering our pH is counterproductive, keeping the lid safely secure on will help to eliminate some of that exposure of CO2 to the water surface. So again, removing my lid, I've got my half inch drill bit and my cordless drill. I can pick a height that's appropriate for me. Obviously, the lower along the container I go, the less capacity I'm going to have. So I usually go for somewhere right along the top, being careful to stay away from the rim. You can see the plastic drills very easily, not a lot of effort. Then I'm going to take my quarter inch float valve. I'm going to remove the compression nut and be careful because this compression nut has a couple of little fittings inside of there, ferrules that will help the nut compress around the tube once you've installed the tube. So you can place that head up there. And now this is the retaining bolt that will keep the float valve taut within the container. I'm going to take this, make sure that the o-ring is still present, and I'm going to go ahead to the inside of my container and simply just push the float valve straight through. You can see that that's allowed for a pretty nice hole but that little rubber grommet will make sure that absolutely no water ever leaks or spills out if that level is reached. So I'm now gonna take my retaining nut and put it back on the threaded portion of my float valve assembly. You'll wanna do this until the nut reaches the body of the storage container and then give it an extra half a turn just for security. And at this point, this, the float valve is firmly attached to the storage container. I'm now gonna take what will be the product line coming off of my RODI system and pass it through the compression end of the float valve assembly. Notice how the tube pushes right through. What I like to do is go ahead and insert this in far to the float valve as it will go. Notice there I can't push it any further. At this point I go ahead and slide the compression nut over the thread and I just tighten it down. Again I'm going for about a finger tight feel here. No need to even use any hand tools. As this is firmly attached, you'll notice I can't pull my quarter inch RO tubing out. At this point, you can just make sure that your float valve is attached to either the exit product water from the RODI system, or again, if you have just an RO system, you're gonna come directly off of the four-way automatic shutoff valve, and that will keep your system automated. It can take up to two minutes for the system to, to build up enough pressure to shut off the drain line and, and go to idle mode once the level has been reached in the storage container. If you've installed the automatic shutoff as per this video and you're still having some situations where your drain water is continuing or the unit seems to continue to run, two things you're going to want to check. First is going to be to make sure the presence of your floor restrictor is there. Every now and then folks will move a drain line, extend it or whatnot, and this piece will end up missing. If this is not present, the unit will not shut off. And you can see there, it's actually nicely stuck inside the drain line. That's okay. I can take the quarter inch tube, slide it back into the tail, and then just slide that back into the fitting. Again, I'm, I'm looking for a, a push past an O-ring to make sure it's seated. If that floor restrictor is missing, your unit will not have a chance to build up sufficient pressure and the water will just kind of pee down the drain line the whole time and you will not have uh, an automated system. 
The only other thing to check for if your system is not uh, shutting off the waistline and discontinuing its production is to go ahead and make sure you don't have any leaks. Every now and then if this tube isn't pushed in enough or if a float valve isn't joined uh, fastly enough to the container, you might have a little drip. And that little drip, though it seems insignificant, will not let the unit build up pressure and, and trigger the uh, diaphragm within the automatic shutoff valve. You now have a completely automated RODI system and your storage container will keep its level at all times of the day. If you have any questions or any troubles when installing this, please give us a call at the shop. Our number there is 407-599-2123 or you can send us a general email at sales at aquaee.com. That's A-Q-U-A, two letter E's like Edward.com. Thank you guys, look forward to working with you.